Hello. Hey, Hannah. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, are you in Toronto as well? I'm not. I'm like hiding out in a cabin in Alberta right now. <laughs> oh, I'm. And, and is it is it snowing there? Like I said, read it was supposed to snow today in Alberta. Oh, it's been snowing for a week. Yes, we have snow. Okay. Well. Good luck. Um, I, I hope you have good cross-country skiing or downhill skiing near you. And I'm a bit, if you do, I'm a bit envious because I'm stuck in my house with my kids, except when right. I go see Jason. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for taking the time to meet with us ha tonight, Hannah. I'd love to hear about your career journey. I think you have a bit different uh, uh, career journey than most. Yeah, it's it's really different in some ways. But then when I reflect on, you know, I've, I've been in different industries, uh, radio. I actually built an accelerator um, I've also, uh, am a co-founder of a social enterprise that employs, uh, people who are facing poverty, but there's been kind of the same strain, which is always about storytelling, um, always about innovative new ideas, all of those types of things. And so I, I kind of go with, with those pieces, but for me, it's always been really, how do I storytell? How do I work in community and those types of pieces? So, uh I, I love identifying your strength and sharing the high level with your career path. I believe though you got into radio, you didn't start off in radio and you, you managed to find your way to get in radio. So can you really make, just take what you just told us, make it concrete by telling us what you were doing before you got into radio and what you did in radio and how you basically opened the door? Yeah, I joke that I was having a midlife crisis. It was like, I was just turning 30 and uh, it was it was back in 2008-ish when everything like global economy goes down and my business at the time actually i had a co-working space although the word co-working didn't exist then and all of these small businesses went under i was losing everything and i had this moment of like what did i want to be when i was a kid and when i was a kid i was sitting in my room and i was taking a big old i'm so dating myself it's amazing <laughs> um I was like taping the radio and I was doing the intro and the outro of the radio in my Very bedroom cool. when I was eight years old. And when I went and wanted to go into radio school, my parents said, no, there's no money in radio. You're not going. And my dad was an entrepreneur and he was like, you need to be going down this road, which I'm innovative and I'm an entrepreneur and that's definitely in me, but I didn't go into radio school. So you know, here I am kind of, you know, in the mid of a global crisis, I'm having my own crisis. And I was like, what did I want to be when I grew up? And it was radio. And so I took a chance. And what I did, though, was I just started going onto forums, finding any radio forums, finding people that worked in it, talking to them about it, what's good about it, what's not. What I discovered was that the creative departments actually write all of the commercials. Um, and not all of them for the big, big corporations like McDonald's and so on. They obviously have big marketing companies, but for all the small businesses, it's actually written typically in house and I write and I speak and I'm a storyteller. And I had a mentor who said, well, you actually could use these skills, which really translate into marketing and, and, and come in here. And so I just started actually first volunteering at the radio station. They couldn't get rid of me. That's, that's a great way to start. Volunteer, get so to know the can industry. I, can I ask a couple of questions here? First, yeah. did, so you just, was your just objective to get into radio? Did you want to do the intros and outros still? Or is it like, okay, my first step is just to break into radio? No, I, I've always been first step, break into radio. And I will say that advice came from my dad who said, no matter what you want, take whatever job, take the entry level job, get in the door and work hard, but use your best skills and show up every day, use your best skills. Someone will notice you. And that has happened every time in my career. I, go, I get in and I just show up and I be of service. And then someone always usually in the company takes notice and starts to mentor me. And that's exactly what also happened in radio. Interesting. And so the other thing I heard there, let's, and first of all, love that your father gave you after saying, don't go to radio, gave you advice on how to get to radio. Um, <laughs> Unknowingly. I, I you, have give, you have to give your father some credit. You know, he, he learned his lesson and he you know, was open to a new, uh, new role. Um, you, you said you interned. So, what, you know, was this on the side where you still, you know, was your co-working business still alive? So how do you like, imagine, how do you find a the time and the opportunity to intern? Because imagine when I hear intern, and maybe I'm dating myself. I think of jobs like when I'm 18 or 19 and like yeah. 
you know, when I was 28 and 29, I don't think anyone would want to hear from me as an intern and be like, you've had your chance. So tell, tell us about how you found that opportunity and how you made that work. Literally on the weekends, they were, I forget what even people would know in radio now, but uh, you're on the weekends and you're doing like these on-site pieces and you show up and you like hand out prize, prizes. It's in promotions. They're always looking for people. I was the oldest person by 12 years. Typically, everyone else was 18. But to me, I was like, this is what I love. This is what I want. But while you're there, you also have the um, on-air DJs that are doing it live. So I would start talking to them and how do you do this? What is this look like and and so then you know one of the on-air people took notice and actually started to mentor me and we would go out for coffee once every two weeks and then a job came up and I just kept on applying and then uh, and then he was the one who said to me hey you you can write you love writing you should become a creative writer and I was like that exists in radio <laughs> and so off I went and I applied for that job and went in and he also then because he's mentored me you know, gave me a great reference, even though, you know, I was just volunteering. And this other person then took a chance on me, saw my previous history, knew I had, like, I had zero radio school. People go to school for this, right? And I was like, yeah, I can do this. And within six months of being in in that creative writer job, first of all, I was so happy to have a title that said creative writer. I thought it was so cool. Uh, I was then creative director within eight months and being mentored people sit in for 10 years waiting for a role like that in radio and uh and then there we go what well, there i was and again just keep on going and then actually i ended up getting my own little tiny show it was like literally five to ten minutes and it was all about i had to date whoever asked me out oh so that wow. was fun so so please i'm gonna now flip it on to the audience today so use creativity you use any opportunity to get into new new job. So let's say, I think many people here might be trying to break into tech other than maybe yep. starting a dating um, live stream. What else would you recommend for someone? Like what's, what's, what's the approach someone should take? I think it's the same thing. Like for me, and this is what I've really learned at CEO and really been able to hone in on this is like, go to everyone that knows you and especially people that have worked with you and ask them flat out, when have you seen me at my best? When do I thrive? When am I doing all of those things? And we just did that at CEO as a team. I got 12 people feedback of when they've seen me at my best and what I do. And I got really clear. I was like, oh, that's what I'm good at. When I show up and I'm like so on fire, this is what I should be doing. So get really clear on what you're great at first. Then start volunteering, go to events. There's tech events everywhere. Hello, tech to Like <laughs> go to events. Do all of these different things. This is what I've done every time uh, with the accelerator and everything. I just started volunteering for startup for a startup organization, and and you just you give you give before you get. So, I love those two. I'm gonna break down two high level. Know what your strengths are, play to them, and then volunteer with the industry you wanna break into. So I, I love this advice. I know we have a question from one of the TechTO insiders, Emily. Uh, can you please join the stage? Hello. Hi, Emily. Hello, Hannah. I'm also from Edmonton, so I know that it's already snowing. Yeah, so my question is, like, I just finished a web development boot camp, and I'm really trying, like, trying to apply and get into the tech industry, but it just seems like such a dire um, moment right now with this pandemic. And, like, I've just noticed that a lot of people are getting laid off, so this is a great opportunity for everyone to, tra to switch careers and pivot to tech because now that everything's remote, like everyone's going to be more dependent in tech. So I wonder if like you have more tips that, because you already started discussing it at the beginning. So more tips would help out a lot of people. Thank you. I think those tips are really, really, uh, you know, knowing what you're great at, but also get into community with other people. Are there people within your circle or when you're at different events that uh, you want to pair up with or that maybe you want to create something on your own. And so really get in communi community with people, be able to ask for mentorship and get out there. I know it's a hard time this year, but you're totally right that right now we're moving into tech. We can work and do events from anywhere. So it's really just showing up, asking questions. And if you get a no, the answer is not for you to walk away. If you hear a no, it's like, okay, and who else do you know that you think I, where else should I go? Where would I be a better fit? Do you know of another place I should be? 
anytime you hear a no, ask more questions to get more connections to other people that are out there. Excellent. Hannah, thanks so much for your advice and thanks so much for your insights. I, I hope Next next time we do Tech to you, Talent, we can have a few people have listened to you and have found that job either by interning to get their first foot in or have actually got a new job in tech. I think this place right? is incredibly helpful. I really hope so too. And I have to say that with that little tiny radio show, that's how I found my husband. So you never know what will happen when you just put yourself out there. So I encourage everyone to do that. Excellent. Thanks, Hannah.